Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program in Education Services here at Juniper Networks. This Learning Byte is going to discuss basic OSPF v2 configuration for Junos devices. So this is a good Learning Byte for uh, if you're new to the Junos OS and want to get started uh, with learning how to configure uh, protocols on these devices. So let's look at OSPF here. So basic OSPF v2 configuration is really actually quite simple on Junos devices. There, there are really two components you need to specify under the OSPF section of the configuration, and that is to specify an area, an OSPF area, and then add the interfaces to it that you wish. And it's really as simple as that. That, that will get you going. Now, of course, there are lots of other uh, configuration parameters you can add and deal with under the OSPF stands of the, uh, the configuration in the CLI. Um, you know, other basic elements might include uh, particular interface types within OSPF or maybe changing the protocol timers or uh, dealing with a passive interface and, you know, some basic elements like that. But, uh, but we'll stay fairly straightforward here for, for this example. So let's get into the demo here. You can see the lab uh, setup demo, the lab setup diagram there on the right side. We're going to work within our autonomous system 100 here and we are going to be focused on R1. That's where we're going to do our work. And you can see a couple of connections that we'll be making here. So in area zero, we'll deal with R2 and make a connection to there for OSPF area zero. We'll make a connection in area one down to R3. And we'll also deal with a connection upstream to our neighboring autonomous system up towards R4 there. So let's get in this out. All right, so here we are on R1. And the first thing we're going to do is get ourselves down to, uh, to the OSPF level of the CLI. And you can see we've got nothing there. So let's start out with our area zero configuration. And like I said, it's really as simple as specifying an area, area zero, and then specifying the interface. Now on this particular device, that interface connection happens to be on E110. So we'll add that in and we'll do a show command and we will commit it and we'll see immediately what happens here. Now I'm going to use two uh, operational commands that are really going to be key commands for you to use when you're working with OSPF on, on a Junos device. The first one is show OSPF interface, which confirms on your own device that your interface that, that you wanted to add is in fact uh, up and functioning within OSPF here. So this, this looks good. Now the other key command is going to be to show OSPF neighbor. That's going to show your neighborships and your relationships with the neighboring devices. And you can see we've got, uh, you know, things are looking good here. We've got our, uh, our neighbor attached here and uh, our interface is up at a full state. Things are looking good. So now let's go a bit further and add an area one connection. So again, real simple connection or command rather, set area one this time. The interface we happen to be using is uh, GE100 on this particular device in area one to make that connection. Do a show command again. You can see we've now got sections of the CLI for area zero and area one. I'm going to commit that. And then we're going to use our operational commands again. There's show OSPF interface. Looks good. We've got both of our interfaces. You can see area zero and area one listed. And we are up at full state with both of our connections. Now, one thing to note is in the show OSPF neighbor uh, output, you can't see the area specification for those neighbors. Now, what we can do is we can same command and add the switch detail at the end. And this gives us just a little bit more information. We still have the same neighbor uh, neighbors that we had before, but you can see right there is the area zero and area one. So things are looking good. So really, that's you know that's the 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 real straightforward version of. Uh, of setting up OSPF. Now, just for the sake of um, uh, you know showing you a couple of other things here, uh, let's go to the area zero again. Interface, and I'm just going to pop this up with a question mark to show you a couple of the elements. And, and we're not doing any of these really in any substantial way, but you can see there are things like authentication here for interfaces. There's a um, bi-directional forwarding detection. There's a dead end, also a timer uh, that you can set there. Um, you can set metrics and um, you know, uh, priority for designated router elections. So all kinds of, you know, the usual things you might expect to see here. So things are looking generally pretty good. Now, one other element I do want to show you before we finish off here is uh, that I mentioned on the slide called passive. 
So a good example of that is, um, you know, one of the things that's common in, in your network in your IGP is to advertise the loopback interfaces or your devices for reachability, so you can reach the loopback interface uh, and advertise those into your IGP. However, those loopbacks, you don't necessarily want them to be participating actively in OSPF and trying to form neighborships and that sort of thing. So what we can do here is we can add, and let's use OSPF area zero since we're here. We're going to add our loop interface and we'll use this guy right there. And you can see right up passive don't run in uh, OSPF actively, but advertise it. And so if we commit it, and we do our run show, pardon me, OSPF interface, <laughs> here we go. There it is. You can now see we've added uh, LO0, our loopback interface. Now part of the Link State database, and it will be advertised to our neighbors and so forth. So, so things are looking good there. Now, one other uh, place that it can be useful to use a passive interface is, you remember back in our diagram there, the lab setup gram a few minutes ago, uh, we had that link pointing upwards toward the neighboring autonomous system. Well, that gets into BGP connections and certainly beyond the scope of this learning byte, but uh, you know, one of the things you need to deal with within your own IGP or your own autonomous system uh, to, reach a, to reach your neighboring autonomous system uh, is reachability to the next hop on that direct link towards your neighboring autonomous system. And there are a couple of ways to do that, uh, but one of them is to make that upstream interface on the, your network a passive interface in your IGP. And so that is, you know, again, using the, the procedure we've been using here, that's as simple as I'm going to add the uh, interface here, which is 103.133 in this particular case case. And I'm going to go back up and add the passive. And I'm going to commit that. And again, this is adding that interface to OSPF. So our own autonomous system, our IGP knows about it, but we're not using that interface as an active uh, connection point, trying to establish a neighborship upstream to our neighboring autonomous system. That, that's not what we want. And so this passive switch does the job for us. So let's just do our show commands here to make sure everything's looking good. There we go. We've got all the interfaces uh, you know, established that we wanted, and things are looking good there. We'll run our show OSPF neighbor command. And we've still got the original two uh, neighbors that we had from the beginning, and things are all looking pretty good. So that's, that's it for this learning bite. Hopefully you uh, feel more comfortable and, and uh, feeling good about using OSPF on your Junos devices. That's it for now. Uh, Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Bye for now. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.